One of the things that confuses learners is that Swift strings look like arrays of letters, but that's not really true. Sure, we can loop over them like this. We could say let name equals Taylor, and then for letter in name, print give me a string interpolation letter like that. And that'll print out, give me a T, give me an A, give me a Y, an L, O, and R. However, we can't read individual letters from the string. So this kind of code will not work. We can't say print name three, the fourth character inside the name string. That's not possible. And you'll see it's warning us right away, it's unavailable. See the documentation for more information. Now the reason for this is that letters in a string aren't just a series of alphabetical characters. They can contain accents, such as A acute, E acute, I acute, O acute, or U acute. They can contain combining marks that generate wholly new characters by building up symbols, or they can even be emoji. Because of this, if you want to read the fourth character of name, you need to start at the beginning and count through each letter until you come to the one you're looking for. This is pretty unwieldy in Swift. It looks like this. Let letter equals name, then square brackets, name.index, starting at name.startindex, offset by three. Now what that means is, go through the name string, pull out the character, that's these brackets here. The character you want to read is, an index inside that name, a position inside the thing, starting at the start of the string and counting forward by three characters. When that's run or being well, we should see, there we are, in our output here, an L comes out. Brilliant. Now, of course, Apple could change this easily enough by adding a rather complex extension for strings like this. They could say uh, extension on string with a subscript method, a special kind of method that reads into values like arrays and strings and dictionaries with uh, some sort of integer offset, returning a string, and then return the string form of ourself at the index, starting at start index, offset by whatever the i value was. And that means do the same thing we have over here in line nine, just an extension form so it applies to all strings. And with that in place, we can now read letters like we tried before. We could say let letter two equals name at index three. When that code runs, we should say same output, boom, and L. However, that creates a possibility that someone might write code that loops over a string reading individual letters with the subscript, which they might not realize creates a loop inside a loop. Because they have the outer loop going through letters, plus the inner loop here counting through characters every time they want to read a single letter. And that has the potential to be really slow. Similarly, reading name.count isn't a quick operation. Swift literally needs to go over every letter, counting up however many there are, before returning that. As a result, it's always better to use some string dot is empty rather than some string dot count is equal to zero if you're looking for an empty string. 